A very good afternoon and welcome back to the Touchline on Y254. My name is Max Olwasike. This is the big interview I was telling you about with one big man and the greatest soul on earth, Mr. Dave Etale. Former football, of course, he featured for several clubs locally, KCB, uh, Kangemi FC, and lately Task FC under the tutelage of former uh, tactician for the national team, Arambe Stars, Jacob Ghost Mule. Before heading overseas where he joined, you know, British Army and, you know, things happened as they happened and, of course, he's here to share uh, his side of the story. Big man, good to see you, man, long time. How have you been? Thank you for having me. I'm good. Good to see you, man. Uh, and how does it feel being back home? Um, this time when I'm back home, it feels a bit different because I came because, obviously, of the circumstances that happened to my best friend, um, Kevin, but... Um, Sometimes I look at life in the sense that we cannot question what God has planned for us. You know, and I believe everything and everyone has, everything has its own time. Yeah. Definitely. I'm reliably told that you traveled for 16 hours to be with, you know, the fallen soldier, uh, Kevin or P. O. Lee, who was laid to rest last weekend. And you are by his bedside, even the time he left us. Our condolences. And oh. sorry for, you know, losing a best friend. Um, yes, thank you. Um, it's a very sensitive topic for me right now. I don't think I want to go into details and speak about it. Yeah. Um, because I also want to respect the family, of course. Because um, they're also grieving. Yes. And so many people are still grieving. So for me, right now, it's just praying for the family and just making sure that um, as we live as human beings that we do appreciate life and we just be positive in each and every day and each, everything that you do in life, just make sure you leave an impact. And I think my brother has left a huge impact in the sense that from him not being here, the love that has been shown to him has been extraordinary and it's been, he's really inspired so many people, including myself. Wow. Good to hear. And we hope that, you know, God will continue granting the family, you know, enough strength and fortitude to continue with standing with the big loss. But away from that, uh, Dave, maybe if you can just take us through. So Robert interviewed you sometime back alongside our former colleague, Shiko Keitani, when you were at Raraka, I think, just trying to catch up with your former team, Task FC. But now, of course, you've done a lot of interviews locally and even overseas. And... People really want to hear your story. Just tell us what happened. You are relenting service to, you know, British Army, you know, Queen Elizabeth herself. What really happened during that Af Afghanistan scenario? Um, it was, that day was quite, um, the previous night we had, a, we had a briefing. And every night you're normally given a briefing on where you're going to go and patrol for yes. the day. So we were given that briefing. And we were actually being told that we are going to the Taliban stronghold in Afghanistan, Helman province. Yeah. And um, actually that night I didn't sleep because as a soldier, when you're out there on operations uh, with the kind of job that I was doing, you're not supposed to sleep without your boots, your trouser or anything on top with your weapon on your side because anything can happen anytime. Full gear. Yeah, full gear, you're, yeah. you're, you're fully on. Yeah. So actually that night um, I didn't, I didn't sleep the way I was supposed to. Yeah. I just had this weird feeling, you know, about about the next day what was going to happen. Yes. As as human beings, sometimes you can tell when something is not right, yeah. and you feel it inside your guts. You got that bug in Yeah, you you've got that. that yeah. Something is burning you inside. So yeah. that's the way I was, and um, we actually left for the patrol about six a.m. in the morning. Um, we went to where we were supposed to be for the day um, as our operation. And um, as we were there, I was driving a vehicle. It's called a jackal vehicle. So the vehicle itself, it's an armored vehicle. It's open at the top. But we've got my commander who's on my left-hand side, yes. who's got the light machine gun, and we've got the heaviest machine gun at the back. Yes. So there we have the gunner, and then we have two other people at, at the back. Yeah. So we went to where we were supposed to be, Kajaki, and we stayed there the whole day. But now, when it was about half six in the evening, my friend at the back, yes. um, started, he made a comment that he's quite bored and he needs some action. Mm -hmm. 
And we said to him, me and my commander, don't wish for something that you're not ready for. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We didn't even finish saying those words. The next minute we've been ambushed. Yeah. The Taliban are firing to where, where we were. And I was the leading vehicle, so they were targeting us because yeah. I was carrying the captain who was the commander. Yes. And you know, when you're in the war zone, these Taliban's and terrorists, all they believe is taking out the the leader the of, leader of the group. Yeah, the leader of the group. Yeah. And it's me who was driving him. Yes. You know, and from there my friend at the back, he couldn't even cock the weapon to start firing, you know, because to suppress them so that we can look for alternatives on how we can leave the area. Yes. So I ended up had I had to leave my driver's seat, jump there, push him to the side and start firing back because if we did if I didn't react the way I'd reacted, yes. It would have been bad to us because the next vehicle which was next to us was about 50 meters away from us apart mm -hmm. and we were only four vehicles um, yeah. um at, and it was a mission of about 12 people yeah it was only patrol yeah. yeah and so the talibans were getting stronger and stronger so we had to ask for help and uh we got the help from the americans we, who um they helped us um using their jets to mm -hmm. try and drop the bombs so that we can distract them for us to extract the area. Yes. So they did that. So I drove for about 50 meters away from where I was, and I drove over something called an IED, yes. an improvised explosive device, yeah. which was chained to four IEDs. And from there, I can't remember anything. I just found myself in, back in the UK in hospital, wow. unconscious. Yeah, well, wow. You usually, wow. you usually see them on TV. But for you, you experienced it. Yes. Live. It's really what a moving testimony, man. Glad that you are here, alive, and you're sharing your story, and at least you're inspiring someone who is watching. Mm -hmm. Now you've ventured into motivational speaking overseas alongside your friends whom you survived together, you know, that particular situation. How has it been like, you know? Um, it's been amazing because there's nothing beautiful in life like using your story to inspire someone. Sure. There's nothing beautiful like using your story yes. and someone is coming up to you to tell you to tell you that you've actually changed my life. Yeah. And for me, when I'm back in the UK, so far, um, we've inspired more than 10,000 students. Mm -hmm. And um, we do normally go to corporates as well. Mm -hmm. We go and speak to them. And I believe in life. Everyone has a story. Yeah. And everyone can inspire someone. Mm -hmm. You know, I always like saying that... Um, that all of us, that we can inspire someone. Sometimes yes. it's just the way we are selfish that we want to be successful or to be to be in a state that where we can we can do things, but we don't want to share. And that's sure. why sometimes I like saying that if you have knowledge and you don't pass it on, it's not knowledge anymore. Uh, yeah. Okay. If that makes and sense. You know, yes. you have defied all odds. You know thriving and succeeding overseas in whatever you are doing, whatever you are venturing and specializing into, you know, what has been the secret behind that? You believe that inability is not disability mm -hmm. and that, you know, the biggest weakness a human being can have mm -hmm. is bad attitude. Yes. Maybe substantiate that. That's because even as we are sitting here today, yes, you know, there are some people right now, as we speak, they're in hospital. True, true. Right? There are some people who are in a coma. They don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. For me, I only lost my leg and broken bones on my body. But wow. That, that's your picture on the screen? Yes. Wow. That's my picture, yes. So that, that's the vehicle that I was driving. Yes. Yeah, that day. And that's the day that I got blown up, actually. That's the same, same day that I got blown up, yeah. Easy, man. Easy. So you are telling us about, you know, the right, uh, uh, your mandate right now, motivational speaking. Um, yes, so for me, one thing that I always carry every single day is I've seen so many of I have so many of my friends who are triple amputees, double amputees. You know, they're in a very very difficult situation than I am. Yes, and I I always pray to God and I say to God that thank you for the way I am because my life is much better right now with one leg than the way I had two legs, okay. yeah. and that's because I've learned to appreciate life and the little the small things in life yes and i've adapted to make sure that i can use them to inspire someone yeah and that's how i look at everything case in point back home now 
Yes. Because when you when you talk about Kangemi, you played for Kangemi All Stars. Kangemi United. That's Kumbuini Ground. Yes. Wow, that's where I grew up. I used to play there also. Yes. And so, you you look at our case scenario here mm -hmm. at home. We played football here. Do you first miss it? To be honest, I'll be genuinely honest yeah. with you people. I don't miss Kenyan football. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm just going to be honest. Yes. I don't miss Kenyan football. Mm -hmm. And it pains me a lot that what we used to go through during my playing days is what is happening right now. <laughs> even worse. Actually. Yeah, even yeah. sometimes now I think it's even worse. Yeah. Because if you try and look at the way our sports in general is being run in the yeah. country, mm -hmm. there's no integrity. Yes. You need to have integrity in anything that you do in life for it to be successful. Yeah. And that's why we are not being successful in anything that we do when it comes to sports-wise. Yeah. It's like even in general in life. If, you're mm. not, if you don't have any integrity with yourself mm. and you have that mindset of saying that, you know what, I'm going to do things the right way mm. to get to where I want to be, yes. you won't be successful. Mm. And I think the problem that we have here in Kenya is we are trying to build a wall before laying the foundation, which is the brick. Wow, yeah, true. You know? Yes. And you find that we are trying to rush doing so many things yes. at a goal instead of taking step, step by step. By step, step. Yeah. And it's just like in general in life. Life yes. is a process. Yes, indeed. You know, where you were yesterday is not where you are here today. Yeah. And I think that's what we are lacking in our, in our sports. Yeah. And it pains me as a former footballer that I get so many messages from footballers telling me, Dave, can you help me pay my rent? You know, can you help me come to the UK so I can join the British Army? Will you, will you advocate for someone upcoming like William here to play football? Oh, yes. You know, uh, one thing that I wouldn't like to do is to try and tell someone not to do something that they love. Sure. Yes. But it's their passion. It's their passion. Someone like William if, um, and other young footballers who are pursuing to be great footballers in the country, they need to realize one thing. For you to be successful, mm -hmm. there are so many things that you have to deny yourself in life. You know? There are so many distractions out here. Yes. I'll use example like mine. I don't want to use someone else's example. Mm -hmm. For me, it was the clubs, you know, the distractions of alcohol, the distractions yes. of things like Mira, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. When you take consuming those things and you're taking those things, you're actually destroying your body. Yeah. So when you when it's your time to go and perform, you're not performing. You keep on asking yourself, why am I not performing? Yes. yes. You know, and you start blaming other people instead of blaming yourself first, yeah. you know, because I've seen so many great examples here in Kenya. So many footballers are languishing in poverty. Yes. Why is that? Some even the guys you played with yes. back, back then. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Some of them, even the ones that I played with, I, when I see them, I feel like crying. Yeah. You know, and that's because if you realize in our Kenyan game, in our football, there's no education on telling players how to invest. Yes. If you look at outside, the UK. Yeah. When I was in, when I, when I first went to the UK, I was playing for a semi-pro team mm -hmm. that was paying me 200,000 Kenyan shillings a month and we used to train three times a week. Wow. You know, and yeah. the players there, they've already been taught on how to invest. Mm -hmm. You know, we have yes. someone who used to come and tell us how to use our money, yeah. you know, about education, mm -hmm. you know, and it's the same thing that I had both of you speaking that, here. Even if you're playing football, the future has to be made today. Absolutely. Yeah. It has to be made today. It's yeah. just like the example that you've used here about Michael Olunga. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, he's yeah. bright upstairs, yeah. but he's playing football. Yes. Look at mm -hmm. this player who plays for Leicester City. Um, Ndidi. Wilfred. 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 The Nigerian. Yes. The Nigerian. Yeah. He's also in university. Yeah. You know, so many players in the APL actually go to school. Yes. And actually, people don't know. Th 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 there was a story about players who have gone to school mm -hmm. and Kielini came on top, mm -hmm. got an MBA yes. in account economics. And people could not believe that, mm -hmm. that Jojo Kielini, the Italian defender, fullback, people thought that all the time is just football. football. All mm -hmm. the time is just football. Got an MBA and people were like shocked. Company, mm -hmm. another player who got an MBA. Absolutely. Yeah, and they are still in football. Mm -hmm. And for us here, even those stories, we don't want to give them out of those yes, successful and I, players. And that's what I was saying to you before. Yes. If you look at the leaders of our Kenyan game, yeah. for me, I think I can say everything that I want to say because it's good when we are honest, honest yeah. with each other. Yeah. If you look at the people who are running the football game, 
today. Yes. And the people who ran football when I was still playing. Yeah. There's no difference. Yeah. <laughs> That's still, still the same. Still the same. Yes. There's yeah. no difference. Yeah. It's still the same. Yeah. How does a team, a national team, go for the Africa Cup of Nations and yet players are complaining about allowances? Yeah. In 2020, we are still talking about allowances. And the money was already dispersed. And the money was already dispersed. Yes. And the same players, they are scared of coming out publicly uh, because maybe they will be tamed and they wouldn't get uh, their sport back in the national team. So they are using but, but intermediaries. See, for, for the player, mentally, he has already been put in that category. Mm -hmm. It's hard for the player for him to complain. He's mm -hmm. not used to for them complaining because even back then during your time, in 2000, in the Late early 2000s, 90s and early 2000s, even the Musa Otieno went through that. Mm -hmm. They could not talk. They, they could are not talk, speak. talking now yes. when they are retired. They could not speak. But even the captain Mugubi himself, with all that exposure he had, he came out today with all those problems that were going on in camp. Yes, and that's because you can't blame the players. Yes, yes you, can't you, can't you can't blame them. You can't blame the players. Yeah. Yeah. If a player. Yeah doesn't decide to speak about what's happening. He's just yeah. trying to be professional. He's trying to protect his future. Yes. Yeah. And you know, they believe, uh, we all know that if you play for the national team, yes. you, this, obviously you get more money yeah. than sometimes some players get more money than the way they're getting in their clubs. Yes. So you can't blame them of not coming up and speaking about it. Yeah. But the thing that I would like to say, and this is to the people who are running Kenyan football yes. and sports in general, mm -hmm. they don't have integrity amongst each other. Yes. And that's why I keep on saying this. Foundation is key in everything that we do in life. Yes. Right now, if I say to you, you tell me, if Kenya we have under 16, under 17, under 19, under 20, under 23, can you tell me if these categories of these age groups is running and it, they are being run well? Actually, the case in Kenya, we have had that discussion very well. The, the case in Kenya at the moment, it's more of a pilot project. It's not the way it should be done and how it's done outside there. You get that they selected kids of under 13, under 17 and put them in one particular place, mm -hmm. which many people will not like because it does not show the whole Kenya. Yeah. That it does not represent. It's like a daycare program. Yeah, it's like a daycare <laughs> pro Actually, that, that is the name. Because now, you're talking of under 13, you're talking of under 17 who you cannot say were taken because of merit. Yeah. You, you cannot put that into perspective. And at the end of the day, it's more of the people in office playing public relations with mm -hmm. the population so that they can get back to office. And now that brings us to the question of selection criteria. Yeah. We've had public outcry over, you know, representation that, you know, the players being selected does not represent national outlook. Yes. What is just trying to say? Did that happen dur during your days? It was even worse. <laughs> worse. It was yeah. even worse. Yeah. It was even worse. I remember we went to play KCB. We were playing Shah Agencies. I don't know if you can remember yes, that. Yes, of team. Naivasha. Of Naivasha. Uh -huh. And my coach came up and told me that if you score a goal today, since you're the top scorer, you'll be called to the national team. Mm -hmm. But that day I had a good game, yeah. laid an assist, yes. but I didn't score, yeah. but I wasn't called. Mm -hmm. But you see, the kind of merit on how people are being selected <laughs> to join the national team here in Kenya yes. is totally different. I've even had stories, not had stories, I've even known no. that you have to give a coach mm -hmm. some money yes. for you to be able to be selected in the team. Yeah. And this is where that sometimes when I look at these things, I ask myself a question. Where are we headed as a country, yeah. especially in sports? Yeah. Football. Let me speak about football because that's what that's I know. That's a sport you that's know. That's a sport that I know. Yes. Where are we headed? Yeah. Where are we going to be in the next 10 years from now? Mm -hmm. Because if you look at how sports is being run outside the country, I did my UFAB license coaching course. Yeah. Wow, that's nice. With English FA. Yes. And I did it with Gary Neville. Ah. Gus Poet was there. Same class. Same class. Yeah. But if you look how these people, they've been groomed. Yes. professionally mm -hmm. is absolutely exceptional yeah you know there there's nothing that they there is nothing like shortcuts yes you have to graft hard mm -hmm. for you to get what you want it's about merit and competence it's about merit competence and that integrity that you have for yourself as an individual yes for mm -hmm. you to be able to achieve what you want in life yeah if you look at here in kenya 
majority of the people who are running the football game yes it's about themselves yeah it's not about the players. They have an interest end game for them and not the game itself. I have a question for both of you. Yes. There is this player who got injured while training for the camp of the Africa Cup of Nations. Yes. Mandela. Brian Mandela. Brian Mandela yeah. Right? Yes. And there was another player. Philem Onotien as well. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Now, that's the name that I was looking for. Uh -huh, yeah. How can such a player not get medical attention? Mm -hmm from the federation and yet he got injured yes on national actually it was a game of musical chairs between fkf and gormaya football club yes a yeah. uh, team he features for on who should supposed to sponsor his treatment and yeah. i think gormaya had now to take responsibility because he had been left you know just wallowing stranded, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah stranded this is someone who's representing our country yes why does he have to go all through that all those through hardships mm -hmm. for him to get treatment Small things like that, they make you sit down and realize, you know what, we still have a long way to go. You know, David, from what I'm getting for you is, yes, we've got sports, mentorship and all this conversation. Mm -hmm. But from what you're saying is, our sports administrators need these talks more than even the players. Absolutely. Be because they're the ones who run the game at the end of the day. They're the, master, they're the custodians of the game and everything. And are they willing in the first place to be available? <laughs> no, that, that is the major, that's what we are talking about. Because you, when you talk about 2002, I remember like the former president of Football Kenya Federation, Sam Yamwaya, mm -hmm. was in office, I think way back from 96, when Peter Kenneth left the mm -hmm. office. And he was uh, there for a span of, I think, 16 years. Mm -hmm. And in that time, there was nothing tangible you can talk about Kenyan football. It's all yeah. about people suffering. It was all about court cases and all that. He left, we had Nick Mwendo come in and the accomplishment everybody talks about, which people don't usually like, is getting onto the Africa Cup of Nations. Mm -hmm. Yes, as a team, you have got to the African Cup of Nations. Yes. But what do you have to show for it at yes. home? Mm -hmm. And that is the, usually what it, people You believe suffer from. with the kind of potential, plenty of talent locally, Kenya ought to have surpassed what they did in Egypt during the Afghan campaign? Um, for, me, for me, I would look at it this way. Yes. You know, um, there are so many great players in this country. Yeah. So many beautiful young talent, you know, in this country. Until some of them are running to feature for overseas entities. Yes. yes. But my question lies in like this. And that's the, same, that's the same thing that I was saying. The people at the top who are running the game, yeah. their interest is not to see the national team succeeding to where we are supposed to be. Yes. And that has been the problem for so many years. Their problem upstairs is about how much money am I going to make <laughs> when I'm in this office yes. before I leave. Yeah. And that is the wrong attitude mm -hmm. to have. Yeah. Because there's no way you can tell me right now that Kenya, our football, we cannot even compare it with the likes of Ethiopia. Yes. Uganda. Uh, yes. Tanzania. Look at the fan base in Tanzania. Yeah. It's absolutely... Crazy. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Kenyan players are leaving Kenya now to go and play. Yes. Tanzania. Tanzan in Tanzan the Tanzanian league. Actually, it's a huge exodus. It's a, a huge, huge exodus. exodus. I remember yeah. when we went there 2006, yeah. when I was playing for Tasca, we yeah. were going to uh, friendly matches with Yanga and Simba. Yeah. That is the first time ever that I, my legs were shaking. Because the stadium <laughs> was full. <laughs> full. And I could yeah. feel the noise coming from, from the, the ground. ground. Yeah. And yeah. I I couldn't even believe that this is just a friendly match, mm -hmm. you know. And yeah. one thing that that we do tend to forget is these players, why they engage themselves in so many things like, you know, gang-related stuff, yes. you know. Um, it's because our football in Kenya is not run, being run well. Yeah. A player goes home, he hasn't been paid for three months, yes. he has a family, he has kids to feed. Yes. What do you expect? There's no way you can tell this player, go on that pitch and perform. Mm -hmm. And that's why when I look at, I've gone to so many EPL games. Yes. Thanks to Victor Wanyama. Yes. You know, he used mm -hmm. to give me tickets. I go to the games. Mm -hmm. I see how football is being run. Mm -hmm. You know, where I live, I was yeah. interested when I was doing my coaching badges. I go mm -hmm. to football clubs. I see how they're being run. Yes. And what they're doing is nothing complicated. We can all achieve what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the question is, with us, do we have that integrity 
to go and do it to go and do it yeah because at the end of the day you find we are fighting amongst ourselves mm -hmm. yeah. you know because i'll start saying using different words towards you or towards yeah. you because of my own interests and yeah. not the player and yet we forget the office cannot be there without the playing unit yes which is the league and the players and with this politicking are we headed to 2022 world cup in qatar because no, the current no. president of football kenya federation i remember uh, interviewing him during his campaigns in 2016 he said that was his ultimate goal seeing the national team qualify to 2022 goal the, the, the thing world is cup. He, the guy you get into the office you sell the dream without mm. working on the dream mm -hmm. yeah, in that you are telling people we are in office 2022 world cup that's where we are going but what are you doing to make sure that you're going to that 2022 World Cup. Doesn't add So the dream all. never gets executed. Yeah. Absolutely. You want yeah. my honest opinion? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. As yes. usual. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is a dream. <laughs> we are not going dream. to the World Cup. <laughs> yes. I'll, tell you, I'll tell you straight up. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. not going to hide and start telling you and <laughs> Uh, hopes <laughs> but really you have the caption for the link <laughs> <laughs> Kenya is not going to the world cup <laughs> no, going to the world cup yeah. and the reason why i'm saying that if we don't change in how we run our football yes we are not going to be making steps yeah. going forward to make sure that we represent our country yeah. the way it's supposed to be represented mm -hmm. because if your house is rotten yeah what do you expect the playing units to be it's just simple as that yeah. And that's why I keep on emphasizing about integrity. Yeah. And I'm sure both of you can relate to that. Sure, yeah. sure, true. You know, if you don't have a proper, well-managed house, yes. then inside the house, yeah. definitely, you won't achieve anything. And you see, like football, which I think is the most popular sport in Kenya, has been one sport that has never had integrity since its inception. Let's not say that it has had integrity. <laughs> you realize that even the... Presidents who are there mm. since, I think, the 50s, the 60s, 70s, and all that, they never talked about integrity in football. They were ever fighting and all yes. that. I think the best president we could say we had was Kenneth Matiba. Yes. The moment he talked about professionalism, let's professionalize the league in the 90s, war came out. Yeah. And he was like, I cannot handle this, and he left the office. The likes of Martin Shikuku, they left to run for office. Likes of Omino, they left to run for office. Alfred, Alfred Sambu, Sambu, they left for office. So what you're yeah. trying to insinuate yeah. is that, you know, they use football as a platform to venture into politics. Yeah, because in Kenya, people are putting that political, musical game all mm -hmm. the time, in that everybody, for him to be relevant, he has to talk about politics. So yes. these people, even... Even when the, the, the late Daniel Toro teacher, Arap Moy, passed away, I think Samu Nyamuya came out saying that he told Miki Jana where we end Linda Mpira. Yes. <laughs> but now, him coming to Linda Mpira, what did he do for us? Nothing. You see? It, look at... Th it, this is 2000, 2020. Yes. Since the 50s, when football was big in the country and all that, it is the first time we're having an office. Just a national office a for a secretariat. Just look at that. And people are talking about 2022 World Cup. So in your interactions with the likes of Gus Poet, you know, big man, I know him very well, fond memories of him during his playing time, and Gary Neville. What, what, how is their view? What's their view of African football? To be honest, I didn't even want to discuss about <laughs> view of our you're about <laughs> African, yes. about anything to do African, I didn't yes. want to You didn't want an embarrassing no. response? <laughs> yeah, I didn't want, because yeah. it's embarrassing. They'll be brutally honest. You know, you. because it's, it's hurtful when you, go to, when you go somewhere and someone tells you the truth about yeah. Yeah. your house or about you as an individual. Yeah. So it's embarrassing. You don't even want to talk about those things. All you yeah. want to do is to learn from them on how you can be better or yes. someone, you know, how to do things the correct way. Because yes. if you look at Kenyan football from way way back even when i was playing yes these things about overage players mm -hmm. has been there this thing has been there yeah you know and it's not the players who are doing it it's yeah. the people who are surrounding us telling us you know what you need to put your age behind for yeah. you to be able to play in the under 17 actually under 20 but the question is yeah. are we not hurting the people who are supposed to be respectively playing yes. for those age groups mm -hmm. we don't even think about it yeah but if you look at the bigger picture yeah. 
it's going to affect Kenyan football hugely. Yeah. And that's because we are putting people in the under 17, under 20, under 23, who are not yeah, their respective is. ages, they are not that. So you find like, where are we headed? You know, we are killing the game. So we need to sit down and think about ourselves and say, okay, look, let's go back to the drawing board. Going back to the drawing board is from scratch. Yes. You know, it is the same thing that both of you are here. I, when did I leave Kenya? I left Kenya in 2006. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We're in 2020 right now. 14 years later. 14 years later. Yeah. Why don't we have an under 17 representing us in the under 17 World Cup? Yes. Under 20 World Cup? Yes. You know? Have we ever asked ourselves about these questions? Uh, uh, under 23 Olympics? Yes. Africa Cup of Nations. Africa under Cup, 17. Of, uh, yeah. Cup of Nations under 17. Yeah. 14 yeah. years down the line. Yeah. 2020. Yeah. Right now we are still talking about the same things that used to happen 14 years ago. Yeah. That just shows you how bad we are doing. Yeah. That just shows you how our leaders are rotten to the core. Yeah. All they think about is themselves and not the players and not the game. <laughs> wow, and there are a few feedbacks coming in through Wilberforce from Umoja saying <laughs> there is one man who is talking and being blunt and honest. I like him for calling out the ills in Kenyan football. The likes of Bonfa Sambani, the usual critic now should also follow the same route. I think Bonfa Sambani has also been doing that. Uh, Trying to castigate, you know, the administrators for I think it's not the, doing... It's the same case with uh, David. Uh, you know, Bonfa Sambani played for FC Leopards. I think mm. he played for Rivertex and all that. And then moved from Kenya. He went to Yanga. He yeah. was one of the first Kenyan players to really shine in the Tanzanian Premier mm. League and all that. So, and then left for India. Yes. So he has seen how football can, what football can do for our betterment, what football can do for people to prosper, for it to change and everybody. That's why when he came back into the country, it's the same scenario, same case, and Bonfess is older than David. And you oh. know what? <laughs> yes. Yeah. That is one man that I do respect totally. Yeah. Wow. Sambani. Yeah. You know so why? there is similarity and resemblance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know why? Because yeah. when Bonfe Sambani, when we were with him at Tasca, yes. he used to advise me a lot. He used uh -huh. to tell me yes. to stop doing these things on the side, the things yeah. that I used to do. But yes. I never used to listen to him. But now when I was sacked from Tasca, uh -huh. I sat yes. down and realized, you know what? Bonfe Sambani was actually telling me things for my own interest to be a better player. Yes. Because he could see the potential that I had. Yeah. But I got lost, you know, in in these things outside. The side shows, shenanigans. Yeah, yeah all yeah. these things that we do outside and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But that is one player that I totally respect yeah. in this Kenyan game mm -hmm. right now. Because that's why he's still successful up to date. Bonfa Samani, you have... Uh, your support from David Ali, the big man. Also, another guy, Felix Imbruzzi, saying, David Ali, jungle hero. In an operation, there are two things involved. It's either you go to raise the flag or come back wrapped in it. He won. Salute, Dev. Oh, of course, you. that's a good statement, of course, coming through. Edmund Olupi saying, man, his story is a real testimony. One minute you are okay, the next minute everything is different. It's a really humbling story to hear from him. So a lot of you know, messages coming through, trickling in, and people, you know, they feel inspired by your words of wisdom. And I think as we look forward winding up, I don't know, what will be your latest submissions on where you seek to see Kenyan football going forward in the next few years? Even as we remain pessimistic that we won't qualify to have <laughs> World Cup of 2020 in Qatar. <laughs> that is a very, very tough <laughs> question to ask me, honestly. <laughs> honestly, that's a very tough question. For me, this is what one thing that I believe. In life, you know, there's, there's no magic. Yes. Right? It's about principles. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's how I was taught. Yeah. And I'm glad that I went through the military. Yeah. The best in the world. Yeah. And I learned so many things. Mm -hmm. If you don't have integrity, respect, yes. you know, and knowing that in life everything is a process mm -hmm. to be honest you'll never go anywhere and i think the problem that we have with us right now is we are trying to do so many things quickly at once yes before we can sit down and think about the structures on how we can tackle certain things in our country mm -hmm. you know 
I remember when I used to play, we used to have Coca Cola. Yes, where, Copa. Co yeah. Yeah. Where did that tournament go? Because it was pulling so many great players. Yes. We used to have Nairobi Province, Nyanza yeah. Province. We should bring those things to the fold. And the people who are running this game in Kenya, yeah. they should actually call themselves for a meeting individually. Yeah. And even you remember Sakata? Yes. Uh, the one that was getting sponsored by Safaricom. I'm Super told that 8. someone, Super 8, I'm yeah. told that someone from the Federation wanted a kickback. And you know Safaricom, by the virtue of their professional approach to issues they said if that is the case we will pull out exactly yeah. and yeah. now i'll put both of you on the spot right now yes it's about kpl yeah look at the wrangles that they're having right now with the current office yeah are we supposed it's not good for the game it's not yeah. good for the game yeah. it's not good for the game totally and those people who are sitting on those seats they should actually call themselves for a meeting one by one and realize that they are not doing this for themselves it's a disservice to kenyan football it's, it's the service to the country yes because we want i want when i'm sitting out there i can be i can proudly say that kenyan football has actually gone somewhere yes. all my friends who are whites in the uk they only know kenya through athletics yeah they keep on telling, oh, you Kenyans are good at athletics. Don't mention anything to do with me about football. <laughs> yes. you it's actually a shock to them that yeah. Wanyama played yeah, for you. It's people. actually a shock that they <laughs> saw that at least we had one great player who yes. played in mm. the Scottish League yeah. and the EPL. Yeah. You know? And we need to have more of them. We need to have plenty of players coming out from Kenya, yeah. going and representing us in a respectable way to carry our flag whereby if you walk on the streets you're proud to be, to be a you, you remember Divoko Rigi when he scored for Belgium in 2014 Kenyans were proud to be associated with him saying that you know Divoko remains a Kenyan Absolutely. and you, do you do you do you honestly think that the father Michael Koth did uh, a good thing he was wise to have the boy you know switch his nationality to Belgium 110% he did not switch he was born there he was born there but of course <laughs> if patriotism <laughs> No, he was, was the factor, there, but yeah. he had a choice. He yes. had a choice, yeah. But I will say this. Michael Koth did the right thing for letting Divock play for Belgium. Yeah. Because... He wouldn't be at Liverpool if he was in Kenya. I, I, I would even say this. Tell, name me any national team outside where you've had that they've had wrangles about wages, about players not being able to be paid... In time. In time. Yeah. Name for me any country. Right now. I don't remember. Kenya. I don't remember. You've been in the sports scene for It's been a logistical yeah. challenge here Absolutely. in Kenya. Absolutely. Mm. And this is the question that I ask. If you're not paid right to come in, into your office every day, will you have the no motivation, motivation yes. to come and work the next day? No way. You won't. I, you, you saw, I think you, you saw recently there was a big story about the United States uh, World Cup team, the ladies and the men. Yes. Uh, after rapping one, they won the World Cup and there was a discrepancy on wage. The men's team, they are paid higher wages than mm -hmm. the ladies' team. And now, it is now all level. Then England followed it up and yes. all that. And now it's all level playing field. Let me add something to that. Yeah. Look at Brazil, what they've done. Brazil also. Brazil has now <laughs> stated that yeah. the, in, the women's team, they're going to be paid the exact, exact same the wages women's as the men. men's team. Now, it's all, it's all about equality and everything. But you realize that. These federations, when you are a player and you have been called by the national team, they hand you a contract. Mm -hmm. that it's a, they realize that now you are a national treasure. Yes. You are coming on to represent the country and everything. They give you And in the event contract. that the contract is violated, then that attracts legal yeah. Yeah. redress. Now, that one comes later when there are problems and all that. But you realize with national teams, it's all about respecting you as a person and mm -hmm. coming to represent us. Sure. So they give back to you and another thing that i wanted to actually add on it quickly yes denis oliech yeah. the best striker that kenya has ever produced true we've got titus sumlama one yeah. of the best midfielders that kenya has ever produced yes these are the type of people now that the office are supposed to work with them to shape the kenyan football because they know the hardships of Kenyan football. And that's yeah. a good point. How comes, uh, you know, the local administrations are not working with the players? It's because, it's yeah. because, I can answer that very clearly, it's yes. because when these players come and start talking about the problems of what these players are facing, yes. the, the office won't like it yeah. because it's the reality. Mm -hmm. 
people are struggling and that's why it's so bad and it it, and it if, gets to me when I talk about yeah, Kenyan football. If I, if I add on to that is, you see now like the way you have done the UEFA B lines and all that, and the case like uh, the one of Simon Mulama, I think he went to the United States mm -hmm. by a scholarship and all that. He has seen how it's done outside there. He wants to come and replicate it for us so mm -hmm. that it can go ahead. Now, the people in office don't want that. Don't Actually, he's come here several times and in partnership with where he studied, I think there yeah. is some university in the US where a lot of young people have gotten an opportunity to go there and, you know, uh, acquire academic and even co-curricular requirements. And I think that's one way of giving back to the society. Yeah, I think is, he's is, doing yeah. what he witnessed overseas, yeah. now, the way is, things uh, are being sports, done. He's a sportsman who played in Kenya, has got a... A, a, a degree in sports management and all that from mm -hmm. a reputable institution is come back to your country then the administrators are like no 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 this david guy these are the guys who want to kill these our cake <laughs> you know what? Uh, this I'll, I'll say this uh, i spoke to a player who's a very good friend of nick Mwendo. yes and this player is i wouldn't mention his name but because i don't want to put him on the spot yes, yes. he was one of the best left backs in kenya they're very good friends. Yeah. And I was discussing him with this thing. And he said to me, Nick Mwendwa doesn't want former players mm -hmm. who know the game yeah. to be in his office. Mm -hmm. All he wants to do is, if you're a former player, yeah. he has to detect, dictate what, what he you wants. Do. Uh -huh. You know, he doesn't want people to come and challenge his ideas. Yes. Because we've got so many greats. Look at Musa Otieno. Mm -hmm. You know, there are so many names that we can mention here. Yeah. They're supposed to be the ones who are helping the current office on how to JJ Masiga it's, the list is endless yes yeah. but you see the same players are still languishing in poverty players are still in a state of confusion even the current players who are playing right now they don't have any mentors to mentor them yes they don't have any they don't have people to tell them look when you get your salary this is what you're supposed to do look yeah. at investments mm -hmm. you know instead all yeah. they are doing right now is getting the money, blowing it out, yeah. and then later on, they're in poverty. And it shouldn't be like that. Wow. It's been a fantastic interview. Quality conversation indeed. Of course, touchline is the show on Y254. A very, very good afternoon. We're still on till 3 o'clock. My name is Max Olwasiko. Soro Robert is here with us and big man. Of course, glad to have interviewed him. Dev Etale, a man who played for, you know, football some time back. Task FC included KCB as well alongside Kangemi FC and then went overseas and he's narrated the deal and predicament he went through and it's an honor having him to share his side of the story and glad that you viewer, you've been inspired by his wise words. Of course, Dave, good to have seen you. And uh, of course, we're looking forward to seeing you in the future. And even as you seek traveling back, you said on Wednesday? Yes, I'm traveling back on Wednesday. Probably we shall be in touch. But just before you leave, this is your camera. In a minute, please talk to, you know, the Kenyans, talk to people who are watching, talk to the upcoming footballers, and talk to, you know, everyone who has given up, is living in despair, and he needs a message of hope. Here is your camera, please. All I can say is one thing. Anyone can inspire someone, only if we just don't think about ourselves. And right now, about um, to the Kenyan players, you know, there's, there's this, how, how do I put it? Um, the road to success, you have to be very, very careful with yourself as an individual. You have to have integrity, you have to have discipline, and you have to know yourself first as an individual. Where do you stand and where do you want to be in the future? Kenyan players, the ones who are playing right now, they should get it for free from me. Don't make the same mistakes that someone like me made 14 years ago, and the current players who, or the former players who made. And that is, make sure you protect yourself as an individual because you're an asset to yourself. Yes. You know, you have to go out there and sell yourself. And that is by performing. Because there's no shortcut. Hard work, there's no shortcut to it. If you get any shortcut, that means, trust me, you won't be successful in anything that you do in life. So if you're focused, have integrity with yourself, self-discipline, you'll be successful. Definitely. Of course, that's the message not only to you know, upcoming footballers and you know, the sportsmen, but even us who are here in studio and my friend Joe Saina. 
who is watching. So after the show, maybe wherever you intended going, hope you've heard from the big man, David Tal. Of course, it's glad having you, man. Thank you for coming through. Thank you for having me. And looking forward to seeing you soon. Thank and you. probably shall g keep in touch, right? Absolutely. God bless you. And God bless you, you too. Thank you for coming through. It's the touchline. It continues until 3 o'clock. Remember, the kick of Arsenal against Fulham. English Premier League back on the fall. Of course, it's kicking off this particular weekend. Four matches on card. How about we discuss that after taking a short break? We will be back with the fan zone. It's the fan favorite segment. The touchline continues. Don't go away. Stay tuned.